frustrate the hell out of me, actually, that I did not see black people in leadership roles in Christian hip hop. Tastemakers. Class. We do more to make a living. We make a life. Yeah. When everything is dark, we are the light. Yeah. We are the tastemakers. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Let tomorrow tell the stories that we make tonight. We do more to make a living. Let's make this a real quick topic. Who are the unsung heroes of Christian hip hop? Goss, this is the topic you talked about. You want to hit on it? Yeah, yeah. So we all know that in the genre of music as a whole, there are people that tie stuff together and make things work in the background. Typically, the artists are the least important person, but there's somebody that is, you know, moving uh, or pulling those strings behind the scenes to make stuff work. Um, so when it comes to Christian hip hop, well, I'll give you an example. So in hip hop in general, you have like, you know, um, I think some some unsung heroes are like um, uh, like the A&Rs for like uh, for, for these record labels. Uh, maybe even like managers like Scooter Braun. Well, he's not hip hop. Well, yeah, he is. He managed he managed hip hop acts like Scooter Braun, right? Or like um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of some other famous managers who have done a lot of things and they've done and they've done like documentaries later on. They say, hey, I put this person, this person together and put this yeah. group together, right? And that's how they got to the world. Um, so when it comes to Christian hip hop, um, who do you guys think are some unsung? heroes in the game who are making stuff happen uh i know quote's probably more familiar uh you know, me i feel like me and quote are probably more familiar with this um but monique i don't know monique you know about chh what you doing out here she's not gonna know what like talking about but i think me you and brina will do a little bit i think monique's got probably an answer i don't know what answer it's gonna be but um no but i'm actually... not gonna share my answer <laughs> oh okay all right all right all right all right <laughs> brina you want to get in here first with this one um I would really, I mean, I was just kind of thinking about this, but I mean, just basically like what Corey was saying, the people that are behind the scenes. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm thinking like maybe some producers. Um, well, y'all, we talking about an actual I don't person. Know. Who are we talking about? Yeah. I know, but it's hard to actually, I don't want to just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to like single somebody out, but gotcha. I'm just saying like the people who are are responsible for crafting like certain sounds that we all like came to love at like specific points that drove, you know, CHH to even like what it is now. So maybe going back um Tony Stone, you know, Lee Jerkins, um just thinking about some some older names that you just know, CHH got some of our, just some of our our favorite groups um, that they're responsible for some of those hit records that you know came out um, that even made it popular in the first place. So I'm gonna just go with those. Word. I think a few that you came still didn't to my name mind. a name, not one name. Oh, you did. You didn't I name names. My bad. You name names. names. You name yeah. names. My bad. All right. Shouts out to Tony Stone. I went to high school with Tony Stone. <laughs> I think some. Some name, uh, some from names VA. I think some names that come to my mind, uh, off the top were are Adam Thomason, he's the uh, founder of Collision Records. Yeah, and I say him yeah. because to me, CH8 sounded a, like a like until they came out. Until Collision, that's a good, that's a good point. Collision you know took saying? it up another, like, they couldn't hold it because Adam couldn't put the right people in place for certain things, but anyway, yeah, got you. But I think he's a hero for the genre for. Uh, changing the sound and putting people together who he knew would sound good together and be good together and like, hey, this is a group now. Now, of course, see, the group didn't last, but if it would have lasted, I think that would have been like Dipset to like, like like Reach being Rockefeller type deal. You know what I'm saying? So definitely Adam Thomason for me. Um, a name that I'm hearing a lot is uh, uh, what's Dre's last name? I forgot Dre's last name. This dude named Dre over at Reach. I think he's another unsung hero um, cause he's on the R and B wave with the artists that he's dealing with now and low key. I think he's trying to get that over to reach, but they may not have a market for it yet. Cause you know, reach is not really a CA. I mean, it's not really a Christian R and B. Yeah. 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 It's more like, I would love to see them try it though. I'm that's surprised what I'm saying, they haven't already it tried have it. to be with the right artists. Yeah. But then I'm thinking too, like their fans have grown up just like we've grown up. So now we're into the R and B. So I, 
I think it'd be a good try for them for sure. But Dre, I forgot his last name, but Dre for sure is another one over at Reach. Um, and there's a whole lot of them, yo. Um, but why would you say Dre over for at Reach? For what reason? Oh, for trying to curate the culture to grow up. For how long? Uh, well, I'm sure he's been doing it for a while, but I just started hearing about it last two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I guess when I when I uh, think about this question, I think of um, I think of cats that have been doing it for for over a decade. You feel what I'm saying? Like that's who have oh, been, gotcha. you know, okay. specifically building Christian hip hop for over a decade. The first guy I'm gonna name is uh, Plastic, uh, Josh uh, Nemitsky. Some people know him as Plastic in the industry. I apologize. Some of these guys you won't know because they're just so underground. Um, but he was actually one of the first cats uh, to, uh, man, what was it? Uh, the Tunnel Rats was signed to, was it Up Rock? It might have been Up Rock. He actually penned a dope article in Forbes magazine many, many years ago or was a part of uh, this uh, really dope uh joint there where, where Christian hip hop was really getting to shine and that label of Christian hip hop was getting shine in Forbes magazine back then. Um, it was a big, big deal. He was a great, um, a great marketer. I would say also just a great guy who could bring cats together and makes it, he was, he's a radio, he was a radio programmer for years. So he was also the guy that you would, uh, that he was, he was controlling what was being played by Christian DJs and radio cats for many years. Mm. Because the artist would use him to service the music. Um, he's I want to say Josh is in he's in Minnesota. Josh is in Minnesota. Uh, like I said, he used to go by plastic uh, back in the day. But just one of the unsung heroes of Christian hip hop, without a shadow of a doubt. Right. Um, yeah, just just r ridiculous. Yo, um, I got two more too. That's not about. Uh huh. I think Kirk Franklin's definitely one. He's a hero hero in gospel music, but he's an unsung hero in CHH for the chances that he's taken with the truth, the chances that he's taken with, uh, well, the, the, the way that he's propped up Christian hip hop. He's never talked bad about it. He's never been like, never oh, talked bad about it, but he also he, never executed, he, he never executed well with Christian hip hop either, though. Not, he executed what he knew to do. Like, and then, and then, and that for me, that's big because if you gospel, gospel, gospel your whole life, you don't know how to navigate or execute in, in the whole different culture. So he did what he knew and it wasn't bad. It just wasn't authentic to the, to the space, but it wasn't bad though. Like it gave us. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, listen, I, I think, I think you're right. You're right. Kurt never dissed us and had Kurt dissed us. Right. That would have hurt. And that would have hurt us. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So he never dissed us. He always lended a hand. He always made sure to help out. I think at one point he was supposed to sign Truth right before that drama went down with Truth. We, of course, know mm -hmm. he at one point had signed Christian Gray I'm before saying. the drama went down with Christian Gray. You know what I mean? So, so, um, so you know, uh, definitely shouts out to Kirk for being a bridge. Had he That's backhanded saying. us, that yeah. would have hurt us really bad. Nah, for sure. Um, and then so I think so about uh, Brian Dye in Chicago. I think he's a un big unsung hero with the Legacy Conference and like, oh, like okay. he yeah, gave yeah. Us, oh yeah, yeah, he yeah, gave yeah. us he gave us spiritual formation in CHH. Like, <laughs> I feel like he's the pastor of CHH, and there's probably a whole lot more people that are involved in that. But the one that I always kept hearing was Brian Die. That's a good point. I think like, that's a good everybody point. Everybody knows Brian Die, who, yeah. who, who in CHH. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a you very know? good point. And I, I, I was trying to hate on it. But that's a good point. That's a good <laughs> Why point. Why you try to hate on it? <laughs> because I always be trying to, I don't know, I just uh, shouted out a, a white dude and then I was trying to, but anyway, so because classic's definitely white too. Saying, it's always racist quote. It's always it is, it's, it's always, 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 it's always, always black and white. Man. It's always black on black quote. on black on black. That's how black we know power. Caitlin. <laughs> What I said about you know what I'm the truth. Listen, anyway, um, no, 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 you're absolutely right. Brian, what he did with Legacy from a spiritual standpoint, from a conservative standpoint, from a Calvinist standpoint. But anyway, from all that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah, they, all that stuff came through uh, a lot of a lot of that way as well. So definitely shouts out there. Uh, my next name, I mean, if y'all going to say Kirk Franklin, I'm going to say another name that cats don't want to admit for some reason. I'm going to say Toby Mac. Um, Toby yeah, Mac. Yeah, yeah. Um, Definitely, of course, a part of, huh? Why you say Toby? 
Well, listen, first and foremost, y'all got to understand, DC Talk, call them what you want to. They was technically Christian hip-hop. Call them what you want to. Go back and listen to the earlier albums, not the later albums when they turned rock, but the earlier albums uh, beforehand, they were definitely Christian hip-hop. And... Um, and they were early with it. You know, because DC Talk was on Arsenio Hall show. Then, yeah. then Toby Mac goes and gets with, um, was it Joey? What's his name? And they formed Goatee Records, all right? And then the first cats they signed on Goatee Records was out of Eden. Again, call them what you want to. A lot of cats would call them Christian R&B at one point or another. The second artist they signed is Grits, Grammatical Revolution in the Spirit. Grits, you can still be yep. heard Plenty of different samples and stuff here. Uh, all I hear is ooh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah. you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? These were some of the initial joints. You know what I mean? Right. And then just like being a in. Like a hero? Legend for sure. But like a hero, well, like, like, you know like what I'm saying? But they also, uh, he also so, made it mainstream. I think he helped to make a few things mainstream, a few things acceptable. You got to understand, some of these white folks Mm -hmm. weren't really accepting Christian hip hop like talking about today. Heard Toby do it, and then even Toby still caught a lot of flack from white people. You know what I mean? Like he's he he took a lot of them bruises first as well. So um, so yeah, I would say Toby Mac formation of Goatee. Not only they, but what y'all didn't see a lot of times in Nashville is Goatee. They had so many artists that were really good, that never saw the light of day, that were just good writers or whatever. They'd be artists, but they would end up good writers or whatever the case may be. And so there would be all these different showcases and just hotbeds for just great musical talent, a lot of times more so on the R&B field or the hip-hop field that was definitely uh, without, you know, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely, I, I would definitely uh, put Toby in that. Um, okay. All right. Let's see here. I'm trying to see... Uh, again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm being a hater. Uh, shouts out to Pastor Tommy. Shouts out to Urban D. I'm being a hater. Shouts oh, out to um. I'm also, sure. shouts out to another pioneer who helped my, my joint was um, Trey Nine. Trey Nine was another one. And I'm being a hater <laughs> because you don't understand being a guy in the background of Christian hip hop for so long, doing different things like I did from radios to making sure magazines was being put out to doing all kinds of interviews and whatnot, the case may be. It would frustrate the heck of me that I, it was frust- it would frustrate, fr- frustrate the hell out of me, actually, that I did not see <laughs> black people in leadership roles in Christian hip hop. That's how like, I feel was now. A, that was a time where you would look at cats like Brian, you would look at cats like Tommy, you would talk, look at cats like Trey Nine, and these cats, you would look at cats like Scott Free, and these cats were running everything and owning right. everything, and the black people didn't. And it frustrated me because, of course, the black people were the labor. They were the artists, you know what I mean? And so it just, it's, it's you know, those kind of things that frustrated me. But, of course, I, even though I have that frustration, I can't, I, 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 you know, I can't deny the impact, the impact uh, yeah. and the work that, Urban D, Pastor Tommy has done, that Trey Nine has done. And of course, you know, Pastor D is, you know, uh, Urban D, of course, is Latino. So, shots out on that as well. <laughs> it always goes back to race, doesn't it, with me? Y'all got to check me. I might be a racist. Yes. Um, that, listen, that listen. Accent. What was that? What was what? Did I put yeah, an accent on? Oh, my wax Latino accent? My accent was whack on you? Anyway, um, so listen. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so Trey Nine, uh, Urban D, like I said, um, you know, even Scott, you know, I ain't gonna front, you know, Scott Free has put together stuff like that. But again, I think there was just opportunities for them to have different resources and make things pop. So shouts out them for doing that, you know what I mean? Um, but also, you know, I'm gonna give it up to Canton Jones. Uh, people don't really understand mm-hmm. that. But when Canton Jones released Kingdom Business in 20, the first Kingdom Business in 2008, Eight, it took it, the Christian, huh? No, eight, I was trying to think. Seven, I, I think it was. It, it was like two thousand. No, it was two thousand eight because I was at Universal then. It took it Christian hip hop up another notch. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? And I'm wrong. He started to get play. He started to cross over a little bit right during, during Kingdom Business. But that album was so. It it became a standard of sorts, and you have to understand that comes right off of the back. Right off the back of that is when Reach Record starts to just blow. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case may be. But it's just like a standard had been lifted. And the game literally became to begin to really change from a hit standpoint, a hit maker standpoint, from a radio standpoint. It was just a beautiful thing. Um, so, hmm. 
Ba, 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 ba. Um, yeah, Kingdom Business was hard. Kingdom it Business was. was so freaking hard. Kingdom I guess you could say, you know, you could say Cross Movement too. Cross Movement helped to put a lot of uh, cats out. They were the first ones to uh, re release Lecrae's project and kind of put him on. Uh, you could think mm-hmm. of what they did later on with K Drama and. Uh, and other cats as well. So, you know, and Cross Movement just in themselves. They were a standard bearer uh, for a lot of stuff, too. So, shout out to them. He's a hero, though. They're like, he's a hero. Like, we know. You know what I'm That's a good point. So, yeah, we are talking unsung heroes. You're right. Yeah. So, KJ52, I would say, we, we would say again, that's another hero, not an unsung hero, maybe. So, yes, you're right. We are talking unsung heroes. So, so we might have gone too far in general. But there's a lot of people behind the scenes who made a lot of moves, did a lot of things, it worked, yeah. and 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 really and, and really just yeah made it made it do what it do. Um, I'm just trying to think. I, I, I uh, low key, uh, the girl that was at Reach Records that started the initial tours, uh, the Reach the not not the Man Up tour, but what is Dun Reach's Shame. main tour? The Unashamed Shame tour. Uh, Tina, I can't think of her name, but she. Um, she was an unsung hero. Um, unfortunately, she she wasn't just an unsung hero. She also became an unsung villain. But that's a whole other conversation that I, I won't go into on this <laughs> uh, joint right here. <laughs> Is she did she did some excellent things and built some great structures and did some great things in uh, in Christian hip hop for touring and, and unashamed and really pushed reach forward with that. And then she turned around and did some villainous stuff. Unfortunately, um, mm, so. That's um yeah i think that's 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 the joint i don't know i don't know you ain't get it who's who's your uh your uh person monique did you say who your person was <laughs> i'm not gonna say my person you're not gonna say your person yeah i'm not gonna say my okay. person but they did I, you did get some love in the chat they said you were an unsung hero Oh, okay. Uh, very, 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 very unsung. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen I, I, one I, thing I, about I, quote, he wants his credit for Platinum Souls. <laughs> listen, well, I, I'll take that credit uh, for uh, not for Platinum Souls as a whole, but definitely. Nah, Virginia. nah, quote. You wanted for Platinum Souls as a whole. <laughs> no, not as a whole. They, they did, they, they, they did, they, no, they, no, they, I'm they made their in, in Virginia. In VA, I'll take that credit all day yeah, long. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no. Uh, so, I mean, you know, those that knew me knew I did radio in Hampton Roads for a long time, uh, for about a good five or six years, steadily pushing Christian hip hop on FM radio. Um, really convinced a lot of the pastors in the area to bring Christian hip hop acts to the area. Not only that, but educated them on who these artists was, and kind of big. You know, became the the uh, what are the guys the traffic guys who you know i was the guy that kind of let everybody know what was popping off on the weekend friday night saturday night what yeah, church to be at where spot be at whatever the case may be put a lot of artists on play a lot of true. artists uh music <laughs> matter of fact got that dude on the fm radio you know what i mean or whatever no, the case may be but, um, <laughs> but yeah yeah i mean i've done tours out here you know shows all kinds of stuff I don't know why and then so of course uh well, really up. Just like the man. <laughs> so i mean there, there was a time you know i i, I guess uh, you know i don't know if that was my season or whatever the case may be but that was my my season so Bam, i had my season out here but um but yeah I so really. so it was it was good times and um like i said yeah i was able to put platinum souls on a lot in va uh for sure as well but yeah um that's what it is um and that's right i did get a chance to bring reaction uh out to va too uh regis and the crew back in the day to catch from to, uh, from when we was back in uh Tulsa, oklahoma at oral roberts university so yeah Yep, yep, yep. That's dope. Yep, yep, yep. So that's that's what it is. Um, yeah. So that's that joint. Unsung heroes of Christian hip hop. There's a lot of cats that have been putting work in for a long time that will never, unfortunately, ever see the fruit of. And that's unfortunate. But you know, we also thank God for the work that they put in. Um, tis the game. Yep, yep. Tis the game, indeed. And taste makers. Class. We do more to make a living, we make a life yeah. When everything is dark, we are the light yeah. We are the tastemakers, aight, aight Let tomorrow tell the stories that we make tonight We do more to make a living, we make